randomly I was watching YouTube. A lot of people, they have trouble finding like that. They want to do something, but they don't know what it is. I started opening up about, and I've had so many people message me. Or out here in this world, like having the same experience that I had, which is just like, I don't know what I can do or what to do, but I know that what I am doing isn't working. It's not what I want. I'm on my way to Forks, Washington to meet Roxanne. She's a former school teacher who quit her job to start a private campground called Wandering Woodlands. Let's go hear her story. Join me. Along for the ride is Juliana. And of course we couldn't leave Annie behind. I'm here with Roxanne. Hi. Uh, wandering Woodlands. So thanks for um, letting me come and yeah, ask you a few questions mm -hmm. and showing us around. Yeah. So first of all, I'm, I'm wondering, how's your week going? Like, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> you know, not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, right now, it's like it's spring, so the sun's staying up a lot longer. Right now, it's a little overcast, but two days ago, it was like a super sunny day. You yeah. We're starting to see the leaves come back on the trees. It's just like really enjoyable. So I've been enjoying the, the spring weather. I'm waiting for it to just get even more and more like sunny and green out here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's been a pretty good week. Oh, where are you from? I am actually from San Diego, okay. California. Oh, nice. <laughs> and um, I was just looking for a place to start a campground. Mm -hmm. And I originally started looking at San Diego. Prices uh -huh. are really expensive there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I started kind of zooming out and zooming out. And my sister lives in Portland. Okay. So then I started looking there. And as I was zooming out of there, I didn't even realize I was looking in Washington all of a sudden. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I found Forks. And I, you know, it checked so many boxes. I was like, you know what? That's the place. And I went for it. Right, so that's what brought me from San Diego all the way here to Washington. <laughs> How long have you been here? I have been here since June 1st. <laughs> so I okay. I was teaching full time. Uh -huh. um, I was teaching elementary and elementary school in San Diego. Okay. And I knew I wanted to start a campground. Okay. And so I, while I was full time teaching, I was putting offers on properties, talking to contractors, wow. talking to the city, like doing all these things. And I wanted to be able to quit by the end of the school year. So I prepared myself and at the end of the school year, I quit and packed up my car and literally drove up here and opened up the campground. Wow. <laughs> So I taught engineering to elementary what? school students. So I taught K through five um, and like the little ones, it, it's, you think engineering is going to be something like crazy. It's yeah. a lot of Legos. It's a lot of uh, okay. like, I did novel engineering, which is really fun where you will read a book, say like Rapunzel and you'll have them identify the problem of the character. So her mm. problem is she's stuck in a tower and she wants to escape her tower. And then they build something to try to solve that problem. So so I had these little like fake towers that they would build either out of Legos or ca cardboard or something, some kind of escape route for Rapunzel. And then we would test them to see if she would like fall <laughs> or if she could get out safely. <laughs> Man, I wish we had that when I was in elementary school. Yeah, it was really fun. fun. I actually, I, I really enjoyed what I taught. Mm -hmm. It was more, I think, oh, like a little education. Cat. Sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's my cat. Really <laughs> cute. <laughs> I have a couple cats that'll wander around. Oh, that's that adorable. Pringle and I Pringle. Have name Cheeto. <laughs> cute. And a little Pringle. <laughs> Pringle? Pringle, yeah. Oh, cute. I love his colors. Because I had my other yeah. cat, she's an orange fluffy cat named Cheeto. And then uh, when we got him, I was like, I wanted them yeah. to have matching names. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where he got his name from. What, yeah. what did you really like about teaching? Um, the things I love the most are honestly just like the kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to have a job where you're teaching them things that they like enjoy and they're, they're like really excited to do. And it's right. really fun for me and for them to like just build things and like mm. work with your hands. So that, that was honestly my best, my favorite part, just working with the kids. Was there a moment that prompted you to begin this private campground like journey that you're on right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, even though I really enjoyed working with the kids, there's yeah. a lot of hard things about being a teacher. I'm yeah. sure like a lot, everyone pretty much knows, but 
you know, the amount of hours you spend after school, just like working on things, you get really burnt out mm -hmm. and it's not a lot of pay. And there's just a lot of like education reform that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like in the long run, it wasn't the place for me. And so I started looking at other things I could potentially do. And I really wanted something that would give me the flexibility in terms of like work hours that um, I could like be outside in nature, mm -hmm. that I could really like set myself up for the future and potentially even like have something where um, I could step back and have someone else run it, you know? Right. And so I had just randomly, I was watching YouTube and you yeah. know how it just like auto suggests videos. Yeah. It auto suggested this video and it was like about starting a campground and like glamping and stuff. And um, it just checked so many boxes. And so honestly, and that was the, the summer before I quit my job. And mm -hmm. so I literally, I was like, okay, I have one year to do it. I know I want to quit my job at the end of this year. I'm going to make it happen. And that's how I just got the ball rolling from there and started doing everything I needed to do so I could quit my job at the end of the year. I'm like full <laughs> head in, like I'm doing this. Yeah. And I yeah. knew for a while that I wanted to like get out of the teaching profession. So okay. I had some savings before that, nice. but I just wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do. Yeah. And and I had thought about maybe even starting my own like engineering teaching camps. Okay. Um, but when I saw the whole campground thing, it just it, it just checked more boxes for me, and it really just made sense for me in my life. I see. I think that a lot of people they have trouble finding like that they want to do something, but they don't know what it is. Yeah, exactly. Like that like specific thing. It sounds like you like found that. Yeah, it was like yeah. I know what I want, yeah. but I don't know how to like get there. Yeah. You know, because actually before um, before I got my teaching degree, I got my degree in civil engineering. So mm -hmm. I didn't. I've done like a little bit of engineering, mostly internships, but mm -hmm. I had kind of done that. I had traveled a bit and done a travel tour guide job. Okay. I um, taught, obviously, elementary, but I also taught in Thailand and traveled that way, too. I'd done a couple different careers, and nothing really felt like what I wanted for the long run. Mm -hmm. And so I was just constantly, like, searching for, like, what is that thing? What is that thing going to be? And then when I saw the campground, I was like, that's something I can really see in my life for, like, a long run. Do you mind sharing any, like, setbacks that you faced? Oh, gosh, so many. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Things always take longer and okay. cost more than you think it's going to. Okay. So, for example, my glamping domes, I thought they were going to be open in May. And um, permits and contractors, it just took longer than I thought. So they didn't open until November, which is the very end of like the even past the season right. of like tourism right right so i've had to just ride out this winter and wow. wait for now like the the spring and summer it's finally starting to like pick up a little bit again um, um but yeah but that was a really tough one because when i did my my um my business plan it was with the domes being open for the summer and the peak season and that mm -hmm. didn't happen so that was definitely a big setback for me <laughs> Wow. So patience. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yeah. And just flexibility. Cause you know, I, because, you know, I had to write out the winter a little bit more than I thought, you know, mm. I, I substitute teach at local schools and oh. I, I do things to be able to like make a little bit of money while, mm. you know, I'm waiting for the summer season to start. In what ways do you think your background influenced the way that you approach starting this private campground? Great is that, question. Is, yeah, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, like, I never really thought of that. But mm -hmm. you know what? Like, I think I've always just kind of been a, a bit of a go-getter. And mm -hmm. like, if I want something, I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to really like, I don't know like other people's like opinions like hold me back you know my dad probably thinks I'm crazy <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like as soon as I quit engineering he thought I was like no Roxanne what are you doing but but um you know I just followed my my heart and it's like you know I wanted to do teaching so they did that and now mm -hmm. that I I did it for five whole well, five plus years and it just wasn't for me as I'm not gonna just stick with it I'm gonna try something new and I think that I don't know, the courage to do that and mm -hmm. to like believe that I can. I think that's something that I've always had in, in my past and my history. And I think that's really like helped me get here. Also, honestly, I was so like, my last job was such a toxic work environment. It was a really big motivator as well. Mm. And it was just um, every single day after school when I would feel like so burnt out and stressed from that job, I went, you know what? 
I'm just gonna keep working towards like my dream. And it would make me feel better to like just work towards opening up something so that I could leave, even though like I was so burnt out, like yeah. somehow it made me more relaxed to just like do more work looking to like find my way out, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you could use a toxic job as motivation to get away from that. I did. Environment. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. I was very motivated. <laughs> yeah. That's smart. Yeah. I think a lot of people have probably been there before. Oh yeah. yeah. And, and you know, what's funny, like, you know, I opened up my, my Instagram account mm -hmm. and before this, I have a personal Instagram account, mm -hmm. but I have like what six pictures on there like i yeah. never made a reel i don't really like i didn't really go on it yeah. and so now having my my wandering woodlands instagram yeah. um i've had to make reels and like try to mm -hmm. like be like hey look at me kind of thing right and um i started opening up about like hey i started this because I was really burnt out for my job and I wanted something different and this is what I made. And I've had so many people message me mm -hmm. and tell me like, I can relate. Like I'm a teacher and I'm really burnt out or I'm a nurse and I'm really burnt yeah. out or I'm, you know, and like, I would love to be doing what you're doing. And yeah. there's so many people that I feel like are out here in this world, like having the same experience that I had, which is just like, I don't know what I can do or what to do, but I know that what I am doing isn't working and it's not what I want. You know? Yeah. yeah. How did your friends and family react to um, <laughs> like the news? Like, did you announce it? Or did you start like doing it and didn't really say anything? You know, I, <laughs> I, I'm lucky to have a lot of friends that are really like they're they're all for whatever I want to do, and yeah. we're we're just like, yeah, oh my god, that sounds amazing, do right. it. And and I, I had friends that were very much like, Roxanne, I really like if anyone could do this. Mm -hmm it'd be you. <laughs> and That's I really, amazing. I really believe that you can do this. And I try, like when I would be having hard times, things with permits, contractors, whatever it may be. And they're like, you know what though? Like, even though you're going through all this hard stuff, like I have no doubt in my mind that you'll get through it because I just know who you are as a person. And that was, that was also really motivating just to hear that. Yeah. Um, my mom is pretty supportive in whatever I do. Yeah. I think my dad is just like, not that he's not supportive, yeah. but I think he's just very much like, you need to be able to support yourself right. and like, you know, you, I want to make sure that you are going to uh, not be homeless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I guess that's a parent's job, right? Yeah. To be that so, person. So my dad yeah. was a little more concerned, but, you know, I think, like, it's still my first year in business. I think right. as years go on, like, he'll see that, like, hopefully it is successful oh, yeah. and sure. that <laughs> he'll, like, come around a little bit more that, like, okay, she's okay. She's going to be fine. Yeah, I think it's people will be surprised too if like stepping out of their comfort zone or trying something new how many friends will actually support them yeah like they think people will judge them and stuff but usually i find that's not it's so case. true because people yeah. are like gosh i wish i could do that you yeah know? Like, yeah exactly that's the thing <laughs> i got that more than like oh are you sure you yeah. know just like oh wow you're so lucky or what or something right. like that i'm like you know i'm just gonna do it whatever right like, i'm gonna try They'll sometimes escape and wander onto the property oh really yeah <laughs> the whole neighborhood is like okay it's a thing <laughs> <laughs> so potentially cows could wander in here <laughs> <laughs> the wandering woodlands that's for sure <laughs> oh, that, okay i yeah, get the name yeah that makes sense perfect what what is your definition of success oh gosh yeah. you know i i can only say it for me in my uh -huh. life and for me it's really just like being able to do the things that i want to do in the way that i want to live my life mm -hmm. and for me that means like the freedom to be able to have the time and the finances to spend time with my friends, my family, to do hobbies, to volunteer, to do the things that like really bring me joy. And you know, I always said like, I hate to say this, but like when I was in college, that was probably like the happiest years of my life. And I try yeah, to think back good. of like, what, what components really like led to me feeling very happy during those years and a lot of it was just like being with friends having like downtime being able to like in between my classes just like sit in front of the turtle pond and like just enjoy nature or like sit and think you know I, I really watched like very little TV in college I was right. joining clubs and volunteering and like I was just doing all these things that like brought me joy and felt very like fun and it was very like community based and so to be able to like have a job that 
will hopefully in the future like make it so that I have more free time and um, brings community to you know the campground mm -hmm. and I could have resorts here like maybe women resorts or something like that and like try to have that community that I lead and bring and so other people that are also feeling like they're missing out on those things they could come and do do that here you know right now it doesn't have Wi-Fi and mm -hmm. I thought about like maybe putting in Wi-Fi and I really thought about it and I was just like but then if I was a place at a place that had Wi-Fi, I would use it. But if, if it was at a place that didn't have Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. I would probably feel a little bit for a minute like, oh, thank goodness. Like right. I can actually just like focus on the people I'm around and not feel like, oh, I need to check my phone. Like I can't, I don't even have the option to check my phone. I'm not going to, you know? And like, I want to have like a really big, I have like a communal picnic table in the future. I want to have like a really big one mm -hmm. where like people come and they can like eat together and like have lots of outdoor games and they can meet each other and play games with each other. And it be like a very communal experience as opposed to like, hey, I went camping and just talked to my one friend I came camping with and then went home. You know, I, I think that we're all feeling very lonely in this world and be nice to have a place where people feel like comfortable and just like going up to other people and talking to them and having it set up that way. So it's like, oh, hey, can I sit here to like use the picnic table or hey, can I join you in your game or whatever? And then everyone's kind of just naturally meeting each other and talking to each other and that's as you know it's what i want in my life i'm hoping that's what other people will like enjoy as well by like coming here what are your future like aspirations and plans uh, <laughs> for Wandering Woodlands? i'm sure you have a lot so many like yeah. a million bazillion <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah like one day i really want to have a sauna i really Ooh. want to have like a just like a, yeah communal area i want to have um a uh like a movie theater tent and like game room tent <laughs> so right now like i have the domes and i don't know if it would be like a dome or something else but i'd love to have just like a communal fun like area for people to like hang out um and then just like expand add more domes um right now i have a little bit of like a, a trail that's marked out because the property is 12 acres and i'm only using about one maybe one half of those acres right now um and so it'd be really cool to have like a full-fledged walking trail with like maybe like fairy houses or I mean this is Forks like home of Twilight so maybe yeah. some like vampires in the trees yeah, yeah. <laughs> like werewolves yeah. Or yeah so just like really fun things for people you know like even just like scavenger hunt like mm -hmm. just really fun things for people to like explore and be able to like spend the whole day here and just like really enjoy that and be able to like do lots of different things I also thought about maybe on the weekends offering like, um, like come at this time and we'll have like ice cream sundaes or like yoga or like, you know, whatever. And just like little events like paint night or whatever. And just like bring people together that way too. Cause you know, I am a teacher. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm fine with like leading things and being like, Hey, let's do a paint night. I'm, yeah. I'm fine with that. Let's, let's just lead that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds super fun <laughs> and super exciting too. Yeah. What sort of advice do you have for folks that are looking to do something similar to what you're doing? Yeah, I would definitely say research, research, research. Mm -hmm. That's That was like my step one. And I called the county probably a hundred million times. Okay. They probably all know my name at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked like, you know, mm -hmm what do I this is what I want to do this is my goal this is my dream like what do I need to do in order to like make that a reality yeah. and the county will or city depending on where you're at it might be the county you're talking to or the city right. or both um, will really walk you through all of that and so I would say that is like step one just just tell the county or city what you're planning on doing and they will really tell you how feasible it is um, and that thing of like I mean it's <laughs> I learned my lesson. I know it's like I should have known and I did know, but still somehow was shocked by it. The price and the amount of time things take is always going to be higher and longer than you think. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, but I, I think also just like it is doable. 
you know, mm -hmm. like there is definitely planning and prepping that goes into it. I didn't just like have the idea and then the next day quit my job. Like I'd already been saving for quite some time. And then I had the idea and throughout that year did a lot of work planning up to the point where I could quit. Um, and conditional use permits sometimes take a year or two years. I live in a small enough town that it only took a couple months. Um, but really like, as long as you prep for it and you prepare for it and you plan for it, it is possible. You just have to, you just have to start at that step one and like yeah. take those steps towards getting there. What is the saying? Like a path of a thousand miles begins with one, one step. Yeah, yeah, it really yeah. is. Uh -huh. And it's just like, you can't see step like 275. You really have to like walk to get to that yeah. step and you can't see that problem until you get there. Like it, one problem that came up for mm -hmm. the domes is, um, the the doors at the very edges of the doors they were leaking it wasn't watertight and so i built these little awnings on them so that <laughs> now it's watertight and there's no water leaking in the domes um but you know day one i would have never seen that coming it was just like that's a problem i had to come up across when i came up across it and then come up with a solution and solve that problem when it happens but you you just don't know things until you get there and that's just the name of the game but you, you try to worry about like oh my god what if this happens what if this happens what if this happens you'll never even take that first step it's just like as long as i can see step one maybe two and three in front of me like i'm good i'm gonna keep taking the next steps and the next steps and eventually i'll get there and i'll solve those problems awesome. so it's doable if you just put your mind to it yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> plan 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 <laughs> but definitely doable <laughs> okay now let's take a look inside the domes <laughs> here we go hey come on in <laughs> This one right here is my swing bed dome and it actually has a bed wow. that is a super large swing. Wow. <laughs> How cool is that? Well, I'll say it. I think it would be awesome to stay here. Yeah. That would be a super fun experience. How about an awesome thing to wake up to too or fall asleep oh, to yeah. outside? And like during the summer, it's so much more like green and filled in. It's, it's just yeah. a beautiful view and I, Paid oh. extra for the skylight. Yeah. Yeah, I also have a jackery in here so people can plug in their phones and laptops and whatever they need. They still have some electricity Perfect. and um, some water so people aren't like dying of thirst as well. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, handy. there's like books and games, How fun. all the fun stuff. Classic camping. Emergency uh, first aid kit, of course. Of course. <laughs> so, this Thank is you. so nice. It's like the decorations, the color scheme. Oh, love it. You know, it's so good job. You know, it's so funny. My someone had told me like, wow, like you're so good at decorating. And I'm like, you know, I've never even decorated my room ever. <laughs> like I literally would just buy stuff from like, you know, Goodwill and just throw it in there, you know, right, right. I was always just like poor. <laughs> and so for the first time I'm like, you know, I like it's a business. I'm going to obviously spend money to like make it look nice. Yeah. And so the first time I actually was able to like, plan out something and design something and it's so nice hearing people think that like I have some kind of like decorating background I'm like no never <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you were able to like have an outlet to like put that creativity to use because even as like a teacher you're on a budget when you're a student in college you're on a budget mm -hmm. so it's probably been like that for like years and years <laughs> yeah honestly and I love I love being creative I love just like yeah. thinking of ideas when I literally when I was teaching last year um my funnest parts was like when I would come home I'm like you know what? I'm just gonna like go shopping on Amazon and look out like <laughs> look at what I want and I would make a little like a mood board so this was almost exactly what my mood board looked like <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> okay. yes are you a Twilight fan you know, I, when I was in college, I read all the books, I watched all the movies, yeah. but it's like, you know, the same amount of fan that I feel like everyone was at yeah. the time because it was such it was like a, a phenomenon, you know? And then I kind of, not like forgot about it, but it just like dwindled out. Yeah. And then moving here, I'm like shocked how many, <laughs> like how big Twilight still is. Yeah. I was shocked. <laughs> and so it made me like get back into it. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> How funny, yeah, Twilight's pretty popular. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So there's lots of, like, hints to Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, like, the chess and the apple yeah. from the books. Oh, cute. The timepiece is also from, uh, it's an alternative cover from the books, the, oh. the sand timer. 
Um, oh, yes, I remember that. And then, I don't know if you see the little people in the tree. Uh-huh. And he was like, come on my back, uh, like spider monkey, yeah. you know, and there's stuff around. <laughs> and then there's little wolves in the, what do you call that? The, like, oh, I crystal see ball. And then there's so costumes cool. that people can wear. Oh, I was wondering. So, this is the, um, <gasps> yes, <laughs> the baseball. Yes. And there's even, like, a bat. <laughs> Um, there's Edward Collins, or sorry, do- not yeah. Edward, my apologies, Dr. Collins. <laughs> and then in the books, not in the movies, but in the books, Bella Swan, um, works at Forks Outfitters, which is the grocery store in town. Mm-hmm. So, um, Forks Outfitters, funny enough, like, sell <laughs> their little, like, name tags. Oh, <laughs> so, so I bought one. <laughs> and then oh, a oh, little... Oh, we were just there for some coffee. Yeah. 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 A little chief of police, Charlie <laughs> Swan. Oh. And no one's just covered it yet as far as I can tell but I've put a little mustache in the pocket <laughs> so people can put a little mustache on for the picture for their like little costume that is so cute yeah, how fun is that? Uh, yes and then of course have to have an umbrella because it's forks and don't want people go like come yeah. in and be like oh no I have no umbrella yeah. oh, <laughs> so right. they can borrow mine <laughs> and then obviously all the twilight books and Cute. then just other kind of like books similar in the similar genre, games, first aid kit, all of that. <laughs> oh, I also give little little teeth so yeah. people stay here. <laughs> you know, when they dress up, they gotta have the teeth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and something really cool about this one is the, mm. the view. So this mm. these are actually seven trees that all grew together. And um, oh. someone pointed out to me that there's seven original like colons from the colon family, and oh, so I'm now yeah. decided to call it the <laughs> colon family trees. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, so but cool. I don't, we could go outside and you get a better view of it. It's really like really wow. beautiful the way they all grew in together. <laughs> Roxanne, thank you so much for taking the time and showing me around your awesome wandering woodlands. <laughs> And answering my questions. Yeah, of course. Um, I guess, so where can people book uh, to stay here? Yeah, so right now I'm just on um, Hip Camp and Airbnb. In the future, I hope to have my own website, but that's, uh, you know, maybe coming soon. Um, but yeah, for right now, Hip Camp and Airbnb, and I can give you the links so you can add it for people. Yep, we'll add the links. <laughs> you can also find me on Instagram. It's wandering underscore woodlands. And that's how you can find me. Great, and we'll add those links too. Yeah. Right, thanks again. <laughs> All right. Okay. So come and stay at Wandering Woodlands. And if you put your mind to it, you can start a private campground just like Roxanne. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks again to Roxanne from Wandering Woodlands for sharing her story. I hope you found some inspiration in it because I know I did. Thanks for watching and see you next time.